Hey YouTube, Kalizzo here with the second installment of the HU role specific guide for the Valley of the Machine God operation. So I'd like you to introduce you all to Avela and Esni, or as we in HU like to call them, A&E. So we're going to be going through a few healer specific mechanics to doing this fight, as well as some things that healers can do to really streamline the group's progression as you all work towards that coveted and beautiful hard mode achievement. So. With that said, I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. So, the first thing that's gonna happen is all eight codexes around the room are going to start shooting at everybody. Okay, so killing the eight codexes drops eight little items that each player has to pick up to bring up their temporary ability bar. What the temporary ability bar is important for is it allows you to switch between the blue and the red polarity shift. Okay? So, as a healer, very important that your UI is set up so that you have the temporary ability bar just right there, open, easily, and accessible. Okay, so you'll see with mine, it's big, it's large, it's obnoxious, it's right in my face, and I know what it is, I know where to get it if I need it. Okay, so in this part in the Nexus, not a lot of damage going out, and if there is, it's not very important damage. People aren't going to be dying from it, so balancing between DPS and healing, making sure you're keeping that balance. Okay, so now we have the bosses coming down. So I am on Esni's side on the north side, with Zalix and his guys on Avela on the south side. And as I see most teams doing this, they're pulling four man groups on each side of the diamond. Okay, That's what we do as well. So there are two things right now that are happening that I just want to pause and uh, touch on. Okay, So the first thing is the countermeasures. Okay, The countermeasures are going to be there the entire fight. They're going to be something that you have to deal with the entire fight. So get used to that. What happens with the countermeasures is the moment they spawn, or the moment they reset their aggro, which happens periodically, uh, they go to the healers every time, okay? Because the, healer, the healers and their healing are the only ones that generate threat in the area, and every time the countermeasures reset their aggro, they go right back to the healing, okay? The bad thing about this is that the countermeasures, for every time that they hit somebody, they add a stack. And what those stacks do is they decrease the amount of healing done by 1% for each stack, okay? Very bad for a healer. Not bad, too bad for DPS, not too bad for a tank. The healing stacks do affect tanks cool, tank cooldowns and the use of med packs and everything like that, so it's kind of unfortunate that way, um, but you don't want them on the healers, okay? So the max amount of stacks you can have, as you might have guessed, is 100, okay? So if you have 100 stacks on a healer, it means 100% of the healing done has been reduced, which means they're essentially not doing anything, okay? So keeping those stacks off the healer, keeping the countermeasures off the healers, very important. So every time their aggro resets, DPS just have to essentially put three GCDs into the countermeasures to get their attention off of the healers. Other than that, everything is fine, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you'll see, I kind of got this blue bomb, we call it a bomb, um, outline tell, essentially indicating to me that I was about to get hit with a blue bomb. Okay. Now the thing going on throughout this fight is when you're picking these two polarities, essentially the idea is as long as you were blue, any blue damage around the field, you won't get hit by, like it doesn't affect you. Okay. So you're constantly switching between the two colors to avoid the damage of either red or blue. Okay. So as you'll see, I don't choose to switch to any color here. And there's a reason for that, and I'll get to it in a second. But I essentially see the blue bomb, and I just take it, okay? Not ideal, but there's a reason why I had to do that, okay? And the reason is because of where I'm standing. We'll get to that next. All right, so one thing that's very important that I need to touch on, and I'm just gonna pause the video to do so right now. Okay, so as you'll see, Sonnet is currently in the middle of doing a tank swap. She has a red polarity. She's going off to do her own thing, okay? You'll notice now that as the tanks come in, Yobu is coming in with the blue polarity, okay? So, you can see that blue polarity above his head. Okay, so what's important about with what I'm doing and where I'm standing and why I didn't choose a color to first begin with is because what I'm doing is I'm baiting the glare unification beams, okay? A lot of people have been saying, they're like, oh no, they're random, they just go on to who everybody, and if you get it, just move out of the way. Not true. Okay, the glares are 100% and completely controllable. Okay, so the rule with the glare is the unification beam from the glare will go to the closest person of the opposite polarity of that of the glare. Unless 
there is somebody closer to the glare that does not have a polarity, then it goes to them. Okay, so I'm just gonna run that by you guys again. If the unification beam from the glare is red, it will go to the closest blue person. If the unification beam is blue, it will go to the closest red person, unless there is a person closer to the glare that does not have a polarity shift, then it will go to them, okay? So that's why I didn't choose my color when the bomb hit me, because I knew that Yobu was going to be coming over with the blue, and by all rights, he's the closest to the glare in this corner here that's going to be red when it spawns, because I'm on Esni's side. So it should go to Yobu. You'll notice that it doesn't. It goes to me, because I'm the closest without a polarity. So now I switch my polarity, I am red, I don't take any damage. Now I'm in rhythm. Okay? Now my job is to stay as close to the glare as possible because I'm the one baiting them. So you'll notice that I'm red. The glare has switched its color to blue. You can't see it on screen, but it's there. I'm the closest red, so it picks me and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm essentially kiting those beams away from the group. The DPS are just doing their thing, making sure the countermeasures aren't staying on me or Zalex as much as you can. All of us have our jobs. Okay, same thing. Red one comes, good. So you notice here, just as soon as I get this beam, what I actually end up doing is I'll run out to the other side, help those guys out, get some shells on them, all that kind of stuff. I have enough time. I get back closest to the glare. I'm still red there, and I get it. Okay? Now we're into the second phase, and this is where the kiting for the glares gets a little bit more fun, and we'll get to that now. All right, so we're getting into phase two, okay? And this is the part where it gets a little bit more interesting for unification beams on the healers, okay? So a lot of groups I've noticed have just, wherever the unification beams go, and I'm just gonna pause this for a quick sec, uh, wherever the unification beams go, just someone just deals with it, okay? So for us, damage was important, and making sure the DPS have 100% uptime is very important, okay? So healers, as long as we're not getting stacks from the countermeasures, um, we can heal through this fight, and if we can take care of the unification beams for everybody, it makes everything a whole lot easier, okay? Um, so this is a fight that, like, if you do it right, healers can make a huge difference on how well the group performs in this fight, okay? So you'll notice here that as we're in the red circle, Esni is the red circle, Avail is the blue, everyone on this side is red because that way they're not taking damage from the AoE of the circle, all is good, Okay? I'm blue. The reason I'm staying blue is because I have to bait this north beam here, okay? Because because it's red, it's going to be spawning red first. We're in the red circle. So if you're on the blue side, you'd be switched to red because you're on the blue side with Avela. So the first unification beam is going to be blue, okay? So I'm blue, baiting the first red beam, okay? And I'm going to do something now that's interesting. I'm going to play it just normal so you guys can see, and then I'll replay it again just to kind of explain what's actually going on and what I'm doing, okay? So right now, doing damage, doing healing, baiting that beam. So as soon as that unification beam comes out, which should be about now, I believe, there it is, I switch to red. I am now the closest person to this glare. I switch back. And I switch back, okay? So I'm just gonna rewind to go through that again. I bait with the red one blue first. I switch to red, I go to this one. I'm the closest red person to that blue beam, which means I get the blue beam. Then I switch back to blue to take the no damage from the blue. Take three ticks of the blue, switch to red, no bomb damage. Okay? Seems a little insane, but I essentially nullified the unification beams for my team by doing what I just did. Okay, now I have a blue bomb. I switch to blue just to negate the damage. Don't take any damage, but I gotta be back to red because the next glare is gonna be blue, okay? So now I'm red, healing, doing my job, take the blue beam, perfect. Now I switch to blue because I'm the closest blue person to this one, I take that one. Now I'm switching to red and I negate all of that. And essentially the beams have been completely controlled by me, okay? So now we're getting into the third phase, so I'll just pause that. One thing I gotta talk about is the unification beams do three ticks. Okay, so they do two, three ticks of damage. So if you're the same color, not a problem because three ticks aren't gonna do anything because you're the same color. If you're the opposite color, three ticks will kill you. Okay, so you can only take, I think it's like one third of your life for each tick. Um, 
Anyways, that's just kind of how it is. So you want to make sure that you're not switching your colors too soon or too late because then you're going to be taking at least a tick or two of damage and that's going to put you in a very, very bad spot. Okay, so I've seen other groups do this where they just kind of wherever it goes, just deal with it. That is a way of doing it. There are groups that have down this fight doing it that way. It's a little bit more chaotic, but it works. Okay. Doing it this way is that the DPS essentially have to worry about no unification beams and they can focus on 100% DPS uptime as well as making sure that they are doing the, uh, the, the power beam between the Nexus and the bosses correctly. And what was important with us when we were progressing through this fight was that if the healers took care of the unification beam, it was one more thing that we didn't have to worry about or the DPS didn't have to worry about when they were trying to learn or figure out or practice and just master the whole DPS, the beam, taking stacks, soaking stacks, all that kind of stuff. Okay, So I'm sure Chris will go through that in a future video about the DPS guide on this fight. Um, but that's kind of essentially why we had the healers choose to do that because it was we weren't doing anything else really. There, I mean, healing wise, it's not awful. This fight isn't very intense healing wise. Um, it can be if your group isn't doing what it needs to be doing with the, with the countermeasures. Um, but that's essentially why we chose to do that. So whether you try to choose to do that with your healers or whether you have a DPS uh, designated range DPS to do that, however it works. But just letting you know that that's how we and hate you do it. All right, so here we are coming into phase three of the fights, and this is where it gets just a little bit crazy. If you've made it to this fight or you've seen any of the videos, you'll notice that all four glares at the same time have unification beams coming out, and you have to switch colors to dodge all four of them. So the strat for this one, find two colors that intersect first, then worry about the second two colors. Okay, so you notice what I did. I went through red, then I went through blue, then I switched to red to take the bomb damage. No problemo okay so same thing we try and keep in our four-man groups on both sides of the diamonds um, so right now our team here on Esni we're all red okay so again healing DPSing you'll see that right now we're closest to the blue intersection perfect we all switch to blue so we all take the fast beam and the slow beam we cross over the blue beams done we switch to red then we can take the red beams without a problem okay so you'll notice that with the beams, there's one fast moving beam and one slow moving beam. So naturally, the fast moving beam is going to cross you first a lot of the times. Um, but what you want to do is you want to get past the slow moving one. Okay, so essentially right now, so say for red, we are looking for the intersection of the two. So one's moving faster. So we obviously want to get on the other side of the slow moving one, which is right there. Then we switch to blue and we take the blue beams. Okay, you'll also notice here too, and I'll just pause this real quick. You'll also notice here too that there's these two lines on the side of the beam. That's to indicate that the beam itself is wider than it actually looks. Okay, so this is where the damage starts, and this is where the damage ends, or vice versa, whichever way you're going through it. Okay, so if you decide to go through a beam without the same color, you know how I told you before how they do three ticks of damage? One of each does one third of your life. If you run through a beam, that has, or that you're the opposite polarity to, you will die. It's just how it is. So, making sure that you switch at the right time is important. And I think there is one that I switched a little bit early on. It might be the next one. But essentially, what happened is I switched to, I went through red first and I switched to blue, but I switched to blue a little bit early. So, I actually caught that last tick of the red beam and it took about a third of my health away. Okay? It might be this one. I switched to blue. So in blue, all good. I switched to red right there, so I took a little bit of a tick of damage that was unnecessary. Run through the red, all is good, okay? So important to note that at the four minute mark around is where we get into this phase. Uh, for this kill, I think we killed it like just over eight minutes. So at least half of our fight in this specific kill um, was in this phase so very important to get comfortable with this phase because you're gonna be in it for a while Okay, so all good here. We switched to blue that bomb damage doesn't worry about it because we're all switching to blue anyways to do the unification beams Okay, so essentially that's what this phase is all about is just going through Managing your colors and in typical hard mode or veteran mode fashion all about the individual Accountability of each player. Okay, so if you don't switch to the right color, it's pretty obvious because you die simple 
So we're all blue, not a problem here. We take the blue bomb, we cross the intersection of the blue as fast as we can, then we switch to red. Obviously I try to move up closer so I can get to the other guys and heal them as well too. Okay. All the while staying underneath the sniper shields. I mean, why would, if you have the ability, take advantage of it. Okay. So now we're coming into the parts where um, you essentially kill the boss and you have to pick up an item in order to do that. And I'm sure TC Thief will be going through that in much more detail than I will, but that's a DPS thing that we chose to uh, put on the DPS. So healers, we're pretty busy in this phase to begin with. Um, so I'm just going to leave that part of the mechanics to TC Thief to explain. Okay. Um, but essentially what we do is we kill one boss first. It's just the easier way to go. So we take out one boss. As you see, we have a Vela left. Um, at this point here, we have the two bombs, so two color bombs. Essentially what that's telling you is there is no, there's no right, correct polarization to choose for those. It's just pop a cooldown and hope to God that you're going to live. Okay, all the while, um, the countermeasures are a problem. So what's happening now is we've lost the DPS. One of the countermeasures is free, and so that essentially is decreasing my healing right now by 30%, and that's unfortunately one of the reasons why I wasn't able to survive. But we have enough people up. Zelux has only got 14, 15. His stacks are going up consistently for countermeasures, but we have just enough to squeeze out the win right here. The unification beams are spawning, but that's not a problem because there we have it. Our first HU A&E kill in veteran mode. Not the cleanest thing, but that's how it's done. So, that's HU's kill with a little bit of an explanation as far as healers, what we do, how we uh, deal with the unification beam from the glares, um, as well as just some insight as, as how the mechanics work and throughout the fight. Uh, so this is Kalizo. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful, and I, I, I really am looking forward to watching all you guys try to go for that hard mode achievement. You know, it is... Quite, quite interesting to me watch uh, groups trying this on Twitch. It's, it's, it's very fun for me. Um, so I hope you guys liked it. We really enjoyed this fight, and we just want to give a, a kudos to, to Bioware. Uh, great job. This fight's a lot of fun. Learning it was a lot of fun. Even, you know, doing it now is, is it's a lot of fun. Very well, uh, well created fight. Like, kudos. Um, you also noticed that I was on my Merc. That's most specifically because the Sork just didn't. It didn't feel right, uh, it didn't feel as powerful, and it just wasn't where we needed it uh, for the kill. Not to say that it won't happen, obviously, I'll be getting this this kill on my sword for sure, um, but just for the first night, Merc was probably the way to go. So, if you liked the video, I hope that you leave a like. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment, try to get back to them as much as possible, and as well too, you can always catch me on Twitch streaming at aka underscore Kalizo. That's on Twitch, so give me a follow, and I will catch you guys when I see you. Hope this was helpful. Have a good one. We do another one tonight, yes. Mm, yes, we have a lockout, so... Because I'm going to watch it on your stream, and then I want to come in and do it. And, like, listen to Kalizo explain everything is like... Yeah, we already <laughs> talked about that. Are you that. serious? We're going to rage quit. <laughs> we, are, we already talked like, about that. Like, Don't I worry. understood <laughs> everything because, like, it's just me. But when you were explaining that, I'm like, this man does not know how to explain shit. Well, he's like, I'm under the really gun. Deep in the he goes really deep in the fucking details does, that yeah. really I'm don't like, matter to you. He's like, I'm I'm healing, so I'm gonna stand over here. And you, all, yeah. you know, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm like, can you, think just, you tell lie? Me, just tell me what I need to do. And then he's like going in, well, yeah, I think you need to do this. And I'm like, Sonnet, it's not Sunday. Don't fucking stick up for him. Yeah. He only gets one day. I actually, I actually I still can't like you too, though. Maybe there's, maybe there's some of those, uh, you know those trial and error adrenals in here somewhere? You can innovate over and over. I hope we don't, because I didn't. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't there. Don't do that. that. Cal's gonna make us die. You can, you can test it right now. <laughs> what? Turn on a, a thing and see if it works. Hell no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Cal. Cal's gonna make us die. <laughs> Poor Cal, dude. Thanks for the healing, Sonic. No problem. You gotta make up the cow. Leave me alone. <laughs> Remote. It's not your fault. Yeah, it is.
Cal spent all that time wind waxing his gear. Mm -hmm. Useless. <laughs> useless. We just lost the quad diff dream too. He did hardcore, dude. 7k right there. Kind of measures soon. Kind of measures. Yeah, this is my fault. Cal is so sad right now. I'm sorry, Cal. This is garbage.